What's going on, man? How are you? I'm doing good, man. How are you? Doing well. I uh, appreciate you taking the time as usual. Uh, how does this one feel after all these fights you've had through your career? Any different? Is it nice to fight on the East Coast? Any certain vibes coming into this Atlantic City boat? Well, it's been pretty chill, you know, uh, being, you know, it's been a while from, uh, from me being on a fight night and way less media, less on the schedule. So it's been very relaxed. Weight cuts going good. Camp went great. Um, I'm excited to go out there and showcase the skills. Just kind of take us through from the last time we saw you until now, I guess, how did things go? Because I think a lot of people came out of that bout thinking you were going to have some some physical, you know, injuries to deal with. And it seems like this timeline, this turnaround is not that bad. So I guess what was the impact mentally, physically, emotionally coming out of that the fight against the virus? You know, mentally, I actually felt great. Um, I was happy and um, just proud of myself for getting back in there for everything I've been through. Um, obviously, the fight didn't go According to plan, you know, I got leg kicked to death and broke the other leg, so it was uh, a disaster in that regard. But mentally, I was like, you know, I had fun in there, felt relaxed. Um, it was fun to be back, but uh, yeah, obviously, I wasn't happy that I, I didn't figure out a way to win, you know, and get leg kicked to death. So I'm excited to get back in there and not let that happen again. Yeah, what do you feel like went went wrong? Was it just that kind of some technical stuff, some defense you could have done better? Was it just once the injury came, like there's only so much you can do? What was the well, the first in my head, I wasn't expecting that, to be honest. I was expecting Tavares. I thought he'd like to be in the pocket, throw, and, uh, you know, evade takedowns. But I didn't expect him from, to, to be kicking and running like that, um, which obviously hindsight's twenty twenty. You know, you break your leg in half like I did. Um, you have to expect these guys coming at, at your legs. But uh, we really didn't. We, that wasn't even like a thought, honestly, which is crazy. We should have thought about that. And um, it – I probably should have watched more fight on Brad Tavares because apparently he has a lot of leg kicks in the UFC. <laughs> we didn't see him as a leg kicker. Uh, so I learned from that, and I'm, I'm very cognizant of that these guys are going to be trying to go after my legs now. So that that hopefully is addressed in this fight. Um, yeah. And then in terms of, like, mentally and emotionally, was there any sort of, like, deep digging you had to do if you wanted to continue to go? Because we talked to Dana afterwards, and he was saying, you know, he would like you to retire, and that would be the conversation he would have with you. So was that ever a question in, in your mind, and what was that conversation like when it came time for you to return? Well, for Dana White, he was told by the doctors directly right after my fight that I tore my ACL and I tore my MCL. So, like, in that fight, if you remember, I, he hit me with, obviously, a bunch of leg kicks, but there was one in particular where my leg kind of gave out. I couldn't stand on it. I was limping. Uh, so I guess when the doctor checked me out afterwards, he, he thought that I tore my ACL, my MCL. So if I was going to be out for another year or so, Dana was like, of course, you know, he should be retiring. Um, but, um, I was open to it. I was open to retiring, not because I tore my ACL or my MCL, just because, uh, you know, I went out there, I accomplished a lot by coming back after having that catastrophic injury. And uh, I was like, you know what, maybe I'm good. Uh, so in the time between that fight and this fight, I was kind of like, all right with maybe being done. And then I got a call for Atlantic City. And the first thought was like, man, that, honestly, that would be a cool place to put down my gloves. You know, uh, that's where I started my career. Um, you know, this is like kind of my old stomping grounds, you know, before MMA was where it's at today. MMA wasn't legal in New York. And so all the fighters, we had a, we had a fight out in Atlantic City. So that's where I started my career. And I was like, it'd be cool to end it there. Um, but I, as the fight as the fight camp began, and I started taking uh, this old natural supplement, TrinityGoldNutrition.com, to get it, it's just it's been really life changing for me. I, I'm not dealing with the pain. I'm, I'm I wasn't able to circle to my right before that last fight. You know, I, I because the pain in my in my leg. Uh, now I'm completely fine. I can load my knee, which which mean, basically what I mean by that is like push back on my right knee and push off without having pain. I haven't had that uh, that luxury in probably like 12 years. Uh, so I'm just happy that I have something that is healthy for me to take, and it's been working like crazy, and, I, and I'm, I feel great crazy. It's almost like having a superpower, being able to load my leg again and, and push off of it. A lot of my fighting style is very front leg heavy because I'm, the back leg was always pretty shot. Uh, but right now I feel really, I feel really good. Do you think there's a chance that this is your last fight, or are those things that you're speaking of like did that kind of reroute you a little bit? Yeah, I don't. I don't. I feel. I feel motivated um, during this training camp. I was very open-minded to being like, all right, let me read myself, see how I feel physically and also mentally. If this is something I still feel like I have things to offer, am I? Do I? Am I as good as I once was? Am I? Can I still evolve? 
And as the camp went on, man, I, I really think, uh, like, skill set-wise still, um, and I think better than ever, if you take one skill at a time, I don't think there's really anybody in the UFC in any division that has the skills in stand-up, the wrestling, and the jiu-jitsu like I have. Um, if you put it all together and average it together, I think I'd be right on the top of the list. So I got to be able to put it together and, and perform, uh, you know, in, in the cage. But during the camp, I like, I was looking world class, you know, and yeah. We spoke to him a little while ago, and he was talking about how when he was a young fighter on the come up um, with just a handful of pro bouts, he remembers watching you and Anderson when you beat him. He was working security, and so he's you know you're, you're somebody that's been on his radar for a while and inspired him. He called you a legend, I believe. So I know um, you know you, you still have more fights to fight, as you said, you got goals. But is it cool to know, like regardless of what happens from here on out, that you kind of do have that sort of impact on the sport that will that will always be there? Yeah, I'm I'm very grateful for the career I've had and everything I've accomplished. Um, but that doesn't give me like complacency. I, I still feel like I have more to offer um, and more to show. You know, I you know I get to show it in the gym and and people talk and like, oh my God, you're good. And but it's one thing, you know, you have to go out there and do it under the lights and and, and be able to show showcase that. And so. I feel great. Everything is amazing. Weight cut's great. The the body feels amazing, better than it's had in years. So let's see what I got, man. I, I think I I could su- surprise some people. And if I can't, you know, we'll see. We'll take it from there. You know, if I'm like, oh, crap, I'm, I'm maybe I'm not, you know, performing the way I feel like I could, then I'll I'll rewrite my, my story from there. But as far as now, I'm you know, optimistic about the fight and the future. Right here, Chris. Did you better prepare for the leg kicks this time? Oh, 100%. Yeah. I don't want to draw a crazy uh, parallel between the two, but, like, the last time I was leg kicked like that was the first Anderson Silva fight. Going into that second fight, we knew, like, the one thing he, if you watch that fight, um, the one thing he really landed on me was leg kicks. I didn't show that there were, that it was an issue in that fight. I ended up getting a knockout in the second round, but believe me, they were adding up, uh, and um, so going to that second fight, it was like, okay, we know he's going to be coming out with leg kicks. We have to really address that um, and take away his leg break, which obviously is a terrible thing and, and freak injury. Um, I checked, I checked two leg kicks for the first time against him in that fight um, before that ended up happening. And in the first fight, there was no checking at all. So I'm definitely very understanding that this dude's going to come out and try to like kick me um i'd be very surprised if he didn't so and you know and that doesn't take away from the other things that he's great at too so i'm i have to be aware of you know his hands he strikes great in the pocket he's unorthodox he throws in weird weird spots when most people wouldn't um so i'm prepared for that and also obviously the leg kicks and then you said you still have more in you you want to keep going after this so what goals do you have left for your career Really, just one fight at a time, man. I just go out there and, and show my my potential and and what I still have to offer the game, and we'll see where it takes me. I think a win over Bruno Silva for me, because of what I've accomplished, brings me to some big fights, some fun fights, and so just got to get get this win and go out there and do what I feel like I could do. And the last one for me, no one touched on this, but you are a legend of the sport now. I would say. Uh, that being said. When you get to fight in front of any fans, I'm sure it's a loud pop. But New Jersey, New York, does that do something a little extra for you? Yeah, this is cool, man. I my my last one was in Boston, and you know Boston and New Yorkers don't really uh, see eye to eye on a lot of things, especially when it comes to sports and athletes. And to get the the love I did coming back from that injury, and uh, to feel the the crowd's energy when I came out, you know, to my "Won't Back Down" Tom Petty song, it was. Really cool. People were singing up on their feet. That was probably one of the highlights of that night for me was just that whole walkout experience. So being in Jersey where I started, closer to New York and Long Island, like I'm, I'm, I'm excited to feel like to, to feel that love. And piggybacking off that question, uh, you know, there's been so many legendary fighters that have fought at Boardwalk Hall. What does it mean knowing you're going to be going through those doors and competing there as well? I mean, really cool. Yeah, it's a historic place. It's like one of the oldest arenas, I feel like, right? I could be making that up. I think someone said that. But, <laughs> um, yeah, to fight in a historic place right here in Atlantic City. Um, you know, I think Atlantic City, ever since, uh, at, really for me, what I've noticed, and not that I've talked to too many people who are, like, experts in it, but I've seen this, the Atlantic City kind of fall, fall to pieces a little bit when Hurricane Sandy hit. 
Um, I don't know if it's fully recovered. So to be able to come back here and put on a fan for everyone out here, uh, put on a show for everybody out here, for the fans, um, I think just help bring good energy to this place and get them back up on their feet too. Thank you so much. Hey, Chris, just one for me. Um, you mentioned not watching too much film for the Tavares fight. Did you watch more film for this fight? I watched I watched more film uh, of Bruno Silva than I've had of any fight I've ever fought, which is still probably less than most other fighters. But <laughs> it was a, it was for me, it was a lot. Yeah. And I know you don't want to give away everything, but what have you come out of after looking at a lot of his previous fights and stuff like that? Well, he gets he, he, he gets aggressive. He's been hit with a lot of good shots because he gets aggressive. Um, so there's opportunities to tag him. And then uh, with wrestling and jiu-jitsu, you know, he's, he's been submitted a couple times. And I don't think he's for a wrestler like me. So the wrestling, jiu-jitsu aspect, along with uh, open shots on the feet, I think is, uh, you know, we'll see, what, we'll see where it takes us. I just got one. With you and Matt Sarah having a relationship for so long, do you have a story that maybe nobody's heard between the two of you guys before? Uh, man. I, 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 any story that's between me and Matt, I got it's got to stay between me and Matt. But we have we've we've had a lot of fun over the years, man, and uh, it's uncount uncountable. You know, he's he's like an older brother, um, and he's been such a mentor in my life. Without him doing what he did, becoming a world champion, I wouldn't have probably I wouldn't have realized my dream of becoming a world champion because he made it seem possible for guys like us from Long Island to be able to do something like that. So, and then even you know being George St. Pierre, you know, to see a guy like that do it, who I could see and touch and feel and know that you know he's just like us, uh, just gave me confidence that when I was in there with against a guy like Anderson Silva, that hey, we could do it. We could do it. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it.